Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife discussion for you. And today we're gonna talk about knives you probably shouldn't buy, but you're going to anyway. And what's gonna happen is, as you can hear there in the background, you are gonna take a bath. So let me go and shut the bath with the water off so you can hear me a little better and we'll get into our discussion. Okay, so first on the list of knives that you probably shouldn't buy, but will anyway, are knives that you just can't afford right now. All of us, I'm sure, and you guys have told me your stories. Oh, by the way, I would love to hear your stories down below. What's the biggest bath you've ever taken? What is the, the knife deal that you really lost some serious coin on and still regret it to this day? Uh, <clears throat> So now let me get into my rules or my suggestions about knives that you probably shouldn't buy, but are going to anyway. First off is knives you can't afford. And what I really mean by this is knives you can't afford right now. Uh, a knife that you just is too expensive for you to feel comfortable carrying, that's a totally different discussion. This is a knife where, and, and here's how it often happens, I think, guys, a knife you get really excited about. And there are a few that I'm really, really looking forward to for 2018. And I just know that one of them is going to come out at a time that's inconvenient for me. It's gonna come out at a time when I just, you know, just spent a bunch of money on a big car repair or just bought another expensive knife because I didn't think this one was coming out for another month or so. And I just am not in a good financial situation to buy it, but you're going to buy it anyway, thinking that, you know, I'll sell something, I'll put off the other expense that I should be spending this money on now, you know, that, that new window that I needed for the house or that little repair that needed to be done on the car that can wait until next month and I'm going to spend the money this month on a knife. Oftentimes we think, hey, I'm going to sell this knife later anyway, or I'll sell something else to cover the cost. And it never works. When you really, really need to sell something, <laughs> that is the worst time to sell it. You're going to lose money. You're going to take a bath because you'll take an offer that's probably lower than you should. You're not willing to wait. <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, there, there are all kinds of reasons, you know, tax time is coming. And so I know my tax return is going to be big. I'm going to buy this knife. And when I get my tax return, well, what if the tax return isn't as much as you thought? Or what if some other repair comes up? We've all had those moments. And so knives that you can't afford, you're better off to just wait. Okay. Uh, even as a YouTuber, you know, there's a, there's pressure to pick up new stuff as quickly as possible. Now in Canada, I've kind of given up on that because shipping takes so long and there's such a rigmarole that oftentimes it's, you know, I'm not going to win the race anyway. Everyone is going to have their video about the latest and greatest thing up long before I do. And I'm just not willing to worry about it. Uh, but for those of you who just love to be the first one to have that new hot knife, you know, you're, it's gonna, it's gonna cost you is all I can say. All right. Number two, the number two way that you are going to lose money is if you buy the hype, you get into the next big thing. It's all over Instagram. Everybody's sharing about it. You know that if you don't get in on the pre-order, you're not going to get a chance to buy one of these. And so, you know, because you want to be like all the cool kids, you go ahead and buy it. And then it comes and you're like, oh, really? man, I'm, I'm not that into it. But by then everyone else has also figured out that it wasn't that great to begin with. And now you're stuck with it because the reviews are out there. Everyone says this new knife that was supposed to be the greatest thing ever isn't the greatest thing ever. And what are you going to do? Uh, let me switch these guys around. I'm going to kind of switch through the knives that I've got up here from time to time, just to keep some visual interest going. Uh, there's the Bark River Tusk. Great, cool fixed blade there. Uh, let's open up this Nkosi and uh, here's a budget knife that is in here to remind us. This is uh, from QSI or QSP, sorry. Uh, this is a budget knife to remind us about where the, the shallow end is, where the safe waters are, where, you know, you buy a knife like this and even if you have to keep it because no one else ever wants it, it's, it's no big deal because you're only out a few bucks. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, carry on with our discussion. The latest and greatest thing, yeah. Um, you know, maybe it's a knife that, you know, it's not quite in your size range or not quite in your price range. Maybe it's got materials that you don't love, but you buy it anyway because everyone is getting it. Uh, the Leong Ma Nuke is a perfect example. Uh, I picked this knife up. Now, I will say I got it for the better deal. I think it would, they were like 
$90 or $80 and then they went up to $150. So I was able to pay the lower price, but it still was not worth it, guys. It really wasn't. And when I sold it, I think I sold it for about 70 bucks uh, when they were on Leong Ma's website for like $150. So <clears throat> the next big thing, the hot Instagram item is definitely something you want to avoid, generally speaking, unless, now there are exceptions to this rule, guys, unless this is, you know, if this is a maker you know really well, and he's maybe doing his first mid-tech, or if this is you, this is a known quantity here where you're very confident you're gonna absolutely love it, well, yeah, that's a different story. And then you can feel a little more comfortable uh, buying that item and knowing that you're gonna really, really love it. <clears throat> So be careful of the hype. Be careful of the next big thing. It's easy to lose your shirt and really regret making a purchase like that. Uh, the next up is it's such a good deal. Now, look, I like deals as much as the next guy. I love getting a good deal on something. And I have bought knives that, uh, you know, I've been interested in for a while. And then I see, you know, that knife that's been $150 everywhere you look is, is on sale. Or maybe it's a mass drop or... You know, it's a, a deeply discounted on Knife Center or wherever. Uh, and so you pick it up for, for 75 bucks or 100 bucks. And you're like, man, that's a pretty good deal. And so you buy it. Well, oftentimes it's a good deal for a reason. This is a knife that, you know, that retailer can't sell, that no one likes, that has some glaring issue that everyone knows about. And so uh, they're not easy to move. And so, you know, you get stuck with it. And that is something that can easily happen. Now, I, I do get that if the knife has been that deeply discounted, you might be okay. Or if it's a really, really special discount. So for example, if you uh, got in on the ZT909 when they were like a hundred bucks from Knife Center, that was an amazing deal. And you know you could definitely sell that knife for 120 and get it anytime you wanted it. So you could actually do a little better on that knife, but that kind of thing is super, super rare. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, number four. Here's the here's an here's an important warning. The knife you think you're gonna make money on, okay? The knife you buy as an investment. Knives do not make good investments. They really don't. It's too easy for the market to turn, uh, and the market does change suddenly. I remember when hinders were really expensive, and then you know within a month, a month and a half's time, the prices just dropped drastically, and people who had paid six hundred dollars for a hinderer two months ago now couldn't sell it for four hundred dollars or three hundred and fifty dollars, and and now they've settled down a little bit, but. <clears throat> That can happen with any knife. I'm sure Grimsmo Norsemans are due to to hit a hit a wall like that sometime in the not too distant future, uh, along with Shirogorovs and a few others. But be careful of the knife you buy thinking you're going to make money on it because everyone wants one right now. Everyone might want one now, but man, if you can't take advantage of the market at the time, you better be careful. Uh, there are, of course, rare circumstances where, you know, you get an exclusive table deal from a from a maker or something like that. Uh, but that's pretty rare. Now, the one thing I will say about this, guys, is it's really not cool to take a bro deal. That is, you know, a great price that you get because the person you're buying it from is a friend or because you've done so much business together that you purposely give each other a bit of a break. Uh, don't go and buy that knife from a friend or from uh, a close associate and then sell it at a jacked up price. That's that's kind of a, a jerk move. <clears throat> Uh, so the knife you buy thinking you're going to make money, that usually doesn't work. I've also traded for knives thinking, you know, you do the math. Well, I'm trading this $400 knife for these two knives. And I think they're probably worth about $250 each, you know, so I could make, I could come ahead by a hundred bucks or so here. It's usually not going to work. Okay. It really isn't once in a while. Okay. And I have had deals where, you know, someone really needed money or there was a, there was a, a special offer that I was able to take advantage of and make a little money, but that is extremely, extremely rare. So uh, next on the list, number five, knives you don't like, but are certain you'll love after you make that one special modification. Okay, so this is the new ZT offering that you hate, but you think if I just, you know, if I just change out the fill in the blank here, I'm gonna love it. <clears throat> 
you know, if I, if I get a satin finish on the blade, you know, if I send this out to a knife pimper and they do a satin finish and get rid of the stone wash, I think this knife will be amazing. If I buy this knife and then the upgraded hardware and the upgraded pocket clip and send it to, you know, whatever hot knife pimper is around right now, then I'm going to absolutely think it's the best knife ever. There's a really good chance if you don't like it, you're not going to like it after and you're going to want to sell it. And you know what's going to happen when you try to sell it? No one is going to be willing to pay you for those modifications that you've made. All right. <clears throat> and so, you know, if, if that ZT sold for $220 and you're into it for $350, you're only going to be able to sell it for $220, right? It's, it's a really big bath modifying knives. Now, if you want to modify a knife because you love it and it's just your favorite thing in the world and you really want uh, to really make it perfect and make it yours, that's a different story altogether. Those are the knives to modify, the, mo the knives that you already love, but you just want that one special tweak to make it uniquely yours. That's fine, okay? But don't buy a knife, make all these modifications thinking that someone's going to cover your expense on all those modifications when they buy it because they really just won't all right number six high-end chinese folders now this is pretty much true across the board guys high-end chinese made folders don't tend to hold their value now that doesn't mean you shouldn't buy them but it just means you should only buy them if you really love them or buy them on the used market, let someone else take the bath, all right? And this is almost exclusively how I have bought, actually it is exclusively how I've bought just about every um, Riot, every Wii knife, every Kaiser that I've ever had has been purchased on the secondary market because they don't hold their value well. So it's way better to, to let someone else take that new knife hit. Uh, and, and I know I sound like the guy that always buys used cars because yeah, used cars depreciate quickly. Uh, I mean, new cars depreciate, you know, a lot when you first drive them off the lot. <clears throat> Chinese folders tend to do the same thing. There's quite a big hit there that they take initially. And, and so why not just buy them on the secondary market? I know someone's got to buy them brand new, but it ain't going to be me. Okay, number seven. Here's one that's a little controversial, guys, but I'm going to say it anyway. Brand new Chris Reeve knives, brand new hinderers. Hinderers to a lesser extent because they, they, I think they're, their standard price is like $375, which is pretty good. But I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, a plain Chris Reeve knife like this in Kosi is going to sell on the secondary market for between $325 and $350. Okay, so don't pay more on the secondary market. That's all they're going to go for. <clears throat> Even though they're going to sell for about $100 bucks more than that on on brand new from, from Chris Reeve knives, right? I think a brand new large Sabenza, large in Kosi is $425. And so you're going to take that $100 hit. Now, having said that, if you love Chris Reeve knives and there's a particular model that you must have, okay, you want a certain inlay material or you want the Blade HQ Q exclusive or, you know, you, you want a, something very specific, that's fine. Again, we're in that circumstance where this is your knife, you're never going to get rid of it. And in that case, you're fine to spend a little extra money and get exactly what you want. In fact, I would encourage you to do that. But... Don't buy a new Chris Reeve knife. And Chris Reeve, I've got to pick on this guy this for a second. Because you know you can buy a used Chris Reeve knife and send it back to them to get it, you know, refurbished and give it a spa treatment that's fairly affordable. Why not go to the secondary market? It's a great way to pick up a Chris Reeve knife. And if you're in Canada watching this, Chris Reeve knives are going to have no issues getting across the border. They're very, very safe bet because unless you're very, very practiced, you're not going to be able to flip this out. Uh, in fact, yeah, see, so even if they say, well, if I add a little bit of wrist flick, uh, you're not likely, most non-knife guys are not going to flick this knife out. <clears throat> let's let's switch out our, our uh, backdrop here as we switch gears a little bit. I'd like now, though, to talk about knives that I would recommend you spend your money on. Knives that, in fact, you may be inclined not to spend money on, but it's probably worth it, okay? Starting with, if you're the guy who has a magic number in your head, you say, I will never spend more than $50 on a knife. Uh, especially, guys, if this is you more because you're impatient, okay? Uh, 
you know, delayed gratification is a really, really important concept to wrap your head around and to embrace. And so if you, you know, you've got an extra 40 or 50 bucks to spend now and then and you'll buy a knife, you know, wait a week, wait two weeks, wait three weeks. And that 40 bucks is now 80 and now 120. And when you get to that 120 to $150 price point, you've pretty much maxed out performance, okay? And so between 100 and $150, there are tons of great options out there and you're gonna get a great steal. You're gonna get something well built. And now, and, and so it's worth saving up a little bit and getting something that you're gonna really, really love rather than buy, you know, $150 knives. Uh, if, you're, if you're already in that boat, just take a break from that and try something a little nicer. I don't think you'll regret it. And of course, if you do, you know, especially if you buy used, you can usually uh, sell that off for and get most of your money back. Just an FYI here, since we are kind of talking about losing money, uh, be careful. You know, you can do the math on this yourself. Most of the time a used knife should be about 20% less than retail. Be careful that you choose a, a budget or that you choose the best price you can find because guaranteed that's what everyone else is doing. So you post your knife to sell, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna Google it and I'm gonna find the cheapest brand new price that I can find and then I'm gonna subtract 20%. And if you want more than that, I'm gonna pass and so are a number of other people, all right? You may get lucky and sell something to someone who's not informed, uh, which again is not great. And if you're in most secondary knife markets, people are pretty informed buyers, all right? Next. What about trying a knife in a different category? This is again now, knives that, this is the opposite of what we're talking about. Knives you probably shouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't buy, but you might enjoy. And, and so these are knives in a different category. Maybe you only like fixed blades. We'll try a good folder. Maybe you only like folders. Uh, try a nice fixed blade. <clears throat> you might be surprised. If you only like traditionals, try something modern. If you only like modern stuff, try a traditional. Uh, try an OTF or a Balasong if those are legal where you live. Uh, in Canada, those aren't options for me, but uh, I, and I wouldn't, you know, I don't have all that much interest in them, but uh, you know, I would try one just out of curiosity. All right, uh, try knives with a different grind. I often get people commenting on a video that, that, you know, I love that knife, it has everything I like, except it's it's a flipper, or it's not a flipper, or it has a thumb disc, or it has a thumb stud. Uh, and you know, I don't, I don't buy such and such a feature. All right, well, you know, you could be artificially limiting your joy a whole lot by avoiding those features that, you know, you've just kind of arbitrarily chosen, or maybe you've had one bad experience and you haven't realized that that's not how most, say, front flippers are. That's not how most, you know, maybe you bought a fixed blade once and it was awkward to carry. Well, maybe that was a problem of the sheath and, and that one bad experience shouldn't inform everything else you do from now on. Uh, same is true of a different grind. You know, I like hollow grinds and I still kind of prefer hollow grinds, although I'm, I'm loving the uh, convex grinds on Bark Rivers more and more and more. <clears throat> Uh, and even a knife with a Tanto or a recurve, you know, I get a lot of people saying, I never buy recurves. I never buy this. I never, well, you know, it might be worth your time and energy to, to try one from time to time, just to make sure that you still feel the way that you feel. All right. There you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love again to hear your stories down below of the times where you took a really big bath or, you know, uh, since we've been talking about not the opposite end of that, what about a knife that you didn't think you were going to like, but you picked one up and it turned out to be a great knife. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will talk to you soon.